Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Dr. J, and today we're talking about kinetics. Let's get straight to it. Kinetics. What exactly is kinetics, Dr. J? Well, let's see. It's an area of chemistry that is concerned with two things. Now, these two things are reaction rates and what we call a mechanism. All right, those are the two things. Now, a uh, mechanism is basically how a reaction will proceed to form, okay? So when we think about kinetics, you can actually think of like um, animals. I like to compare them to animals in a way with this concept. Um, so let's, for instance, let's say we got this lizard right here, right? Um, so a lizard or really any of these type of creatures, turtles, snakes, crocodiles, um, you know, even those frogs, these are all what we call ectotherms, okay? So this is basically an animal whose body temperature matches whatever environment they're in, okay? So basically, if we think about this lizard here, okay? When it gets cold, um, that lizard's body temperature will drop, okay? Now, why exactly is it doing that, right? If it's in a cold environment, it's matching the environment, right? So basically, the chemical reactions that are going on in that lizard, right, if you... If you are in a cold environment, you're slowing down those chemical reactions, right? So since right, the lizard's mashing its environment, the chemical reactions that are taking place in the body is slowing down, okay? Just as we do with any type of chemical reactions we, we see before. So what happens to the lizard? Well, that lizard is basically about to slow down and fall. Why? Why is kinetic so important? Kinetics is important for a lot of different reasons. I'm just going to point out a couple here. All right. So kinetics is important because of what I mentioned up here, reaction rates. Okay. So reaction rates is basically the speed of a chemical reaction. So of course, being in chemistry, especially when we get to big uh, industries, we like fast reaction rates, right? They all like fast reaction rates, you right? Because, you know, the more you can produce the more we can sell, right? So you got a slow reaction. Nobody wants a slow reaction. It's going to take all day, right? Why do a reaction that takes 24 hours when you could do it in 10 seconds? Okay, so reaction rates are definitely key. Um, as well as I mentioned, the, uh, the mechanism. So a uh, mechanism is basically how the reactants react in a stepwise fashion, okay, to form whatever product we're trying to make. All right, so kinetics can basically describe how fast or slow a reaction occurs, and it allows for more of a full description of a chemical reaction. Okay, so this is how we're going to be looking at kinetics going forward. Now, you don't want to confuse this with thermodynamics, right? These two type of weird words, they're going to sound similar, but they're actually different. Thermodynamics will only tell us if the reaction is... Uh, uh, as far as like energy, if that energy is possible, okay, with exothermic, endothermic, spontaneous, etc. We'll get more into thermodynamics later this semester, okay, but it doesn't tell us anything about the rate of the reaction or how, right, it will proceed, okay. So you don't want to confuse those two, just to let everybody know. A reaction rate is defined as the change in concentration of reactants. So basically, we're talking about uh, these reactants that are being consumed. Reactants, of course, are going to be consumed. All right. Now, we also look at products. All right. Because once again, this is the change in, re in concentration of reactants or products. So basically, products right, are, is what's being formed. What's being formed. OK. Over a period of time. So this is our reaction rate. OK. Change in concentration over a period of time. And in this case, we're always going to be looking at reactants or products. So let's look at uh, this reaction down here to consider this. We got A forming B. And let's say, right, we got one molar solution. So if you remember molar is moles over liters, that's in my big M there. Okay, so one molar solution of A with no B present. Okay, no B is present in this reaction, okay? And then I got a plot that's gonna tell us what's gonna happen here. So we can always look at both of these right away, right? So let's just let's just focus on A. I'm gonna focus on A. 
So like I mentioned, we got our concentration, big M, and then we got our uh, time, right? Because reaction rates is the change in concentration. So our concentration is in molarity, and then that change in concentration over that period of time. So in this case, our time is going to be seconds here. Now, if I'm only focusing on A, I'm only focusing on my reactant. So if I can see, we start off with one molar, one molar uh, concentration. Then over time, right, we can see over time that this reaction, what's happening here with A? A is starting to decrease over time. And as we see it decrease, it's eventually going to reach a point to where there's no more A, okay? So this is my reactant. Over time, my reactant is decreasing, right? And it's, why is that happening? Right, because that reactant is being consumed. All right, that reactant is being consumed here. Now, if we look at B, which in this case, the B is gonna be my products, all right? Notice the color coordination here, all right? So the B is the products. It's increasing, B increases. Now, why is B increasing? It's increasing because guess what happened? All, all with A. Over time, A started to decrease until there's no more. Well, what does that mean? It was being consumed. Now, because we have our products, right, our reactants are being consumed to form our products. And we can see, right, at the initial reaction, at the initial reaction, we only had A. But over time, as our reactants were being consumed, we start forming our products little by little until eventually right and we get up here now I only have products and I have no more reactants okay and this is how we're going to be thinking of reaction rates okay over time right my change in concentration changes okay in this case my reactants are decreasing my products are increasing okay so basically right this sums it all up we can monitor the production of a product, in this case B, or the loss of a reactant, in this case A. And that's what reaction rates are, the change in concentration over a period of time.